My guest today is Jim Albertelli. He is the president of Voxter Analytics. Jim, welcome. Hey, welcome. Thanks for having me. Hey, Jim. Uh, let's start with a bit about your background. I'd love to hear about what you did before you were doing Vox. <laughs> well, I, I started um, in the. I did an undergrad um, finance and economics background, and then went to law school, at Emory University School of Law in Atlanta. Um, after that, I did a stint with the public sector. I uh, did an externship with the Georgia Supreme Court, and I was a felony prosecutor in the Atlanta area. Uh, quickly left that uh, and went out and went to a big firm. Uh, lasted a few months, and then ever since that, I've been on my own. I started my law practice in, in Atlanta, um, and then I grew it from representing small banks to regional banks, ultimately to national banks um, and financial institutions. I built that practice up and a reputation to serve Fannie, Freddie, Jenny May, so the ins and outs of, of the origination world, um, the, the servicing world, and the securitization world. So I created the one of the first online mortgage companies that, that mined social media data. Uh, it was a mortgage originator and servicer, and I ultimately sold that company to Cerberus Capital Management. Um, I created, because I saw a disconnect inefficiencies between home borrowers and the banks during the financial crisis, I, I created a technology, uh, the first eBay-style auction house for distressed real estate. So really connecting Ma and Pa Kettle to ultimately the financial institutions, give them equal footing. You know, so if you looked at it, you saw, oh, he's in mortgage. Well, the mortgage was for a purpose to help finance the um, homeowners. Um, the title company was to support it with title, to give a forward look at title that no one had. And then connecting those components, I could connect them to the auction, ultimately you know, engage homeowners. Um, so I built that eBay style auction and I uh, ultimately transferred those rights to a company that became auction.com. I think it recently, um, was valued at over a billion dollars. So, so I, I've been in the in underpinnings of the mortgage market, the origination, the servicing, and the service delivery. Um, I've been in the technology world, building um, technologies and really addressing you know inefficiencies across the marketplace. Um, and so, so all of that's comprised this um, varied career. It's all been around the real estate and real estate finance. That's been the been the um, the uh, constant piece. Um, but that's really been my background up until uh, the Boxster transaction. Uh, in just how do you summarize to somebody who doesn't really understand the extent to which Voxter has <laughs> sort of <laughs> captured and redefined the real estate transaction landscape? How do you describe the Voxter value position, proposition to them in a, in, a, in a really concise and simple way? Well, uh, it, it's really, it starts with validated data. Um, the, the common thesis for, for Gary's operation um, and mine is uh, taking disparate data elements, um, valid, validating that data, um, having it in a very flexible database that you can then uh, extract the information efficiently on. Um, you can layer utilities on it and deliver software as a service to our clients. So essentially what Gary created in tax is, is validated tax data transparency for the consumer, for the, for the homeowner, or for the taxpayer, and for the municipality. Exact same thesis that we deploy with the title information that we have internally. Exact same thesis that they have in the valuation world. So really, when you look at what, what do we have, we have um, one of the most expansive um, databases um, in the real estate space. The, the information is validated to the sources of record. For example, connection points to municipalities, connection points to the mortgage servicing platforms, connecting points to large financial institutions, um, connection points to the bankruptcy courts. So depending on where our technology is, it's all built on this singular um, end to end encrypted uh, validated database. That is the engine that then drives utilities based on what function and what user group that, um, are engaged in the process. So we, we serve um, throughout the mortgage value chain from the loan origination system to the mortgage servicing platform to the trading platform. We use these validated data elements to provide services directly into each of those constituencies. And that is, is, hasn't been done um, effectively and efficiently to date. Um, so that really why, you know, when you say, you know, what is, what is Voxter? And, and I go back and I say, oh, it's a, you know, you, okay, it's a validated database. Okay, unpack what does that mean? 
when you look at third party validation, giving you transactional certainty and vast efficiencies, you can then deploy it for multiple use cases. That's the that's some of the beauty of what we've done is bring in all of these disparate data elements, normalize it, which just means that you couldn't you put it in a format that we can then quickly extract the information from and we build utilities on that data. And so so we are, you know, where our artificial intelligence and machine learning is applied, we are way ahead of the industry in certain particulars. I don't want to identify them. There are competitors out there, um, but we're de- we are delivering an efficient um, closing technology, efficient data um, assets in a number of places throughout the value continuum, the mortgage value continuum, and that's that's transformational. Who are the people, like who's going to use Voxter, like, and, and sort of what is the whole total addressable market that you're approaching? Yeah, when you're looking at the TAM of, of the industry, um, I mean, we're, we're talking, you know, well over a $100 billion um, addressable market. We, in, the, in our technology that underpins title and our alternative to title alone is, is over $20 billion. So, you know, when you're, when you're looking at just individual products and services, there's a $100 billion market. What, what do we think we're going to accomplish um, or what are we addressing initially? Look, I, I don't know at this point when I look ahead I, and I say, if we took this one of these technology components built on our validated database and it proliferates throughout the marketplace um, and, it, and it were to um, touch the 1.1 million loans that are done a, uh, a month in the US, that's just on the origination, not all the servicing, not all the trading, but just on the origination. And, and Canada is about another 10% of that. So let's just call it for easy math, you know, 1.2 million loans a month. It, you know, if you, thought, if you thought your technology would proliferate and touch all of those, one of our, one of our technologies would, um, you know, then you, you're, you're, you quickly, the math adds up pretty fast. You know, you're, you're quickly at 10, 20, hundred million in EBIT a month. Um, it, 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 the numbers are grow exponentially. And so it's like the flywheel, you know, we are laying the foundational elements with the data normalization and the utilities we're building um, to take a greater and greater swath of that value chain. That's why I said, you know, you, you, when you, when you wrote and you said, Hey, tell me about addressable market. I thought to myself, well, you know, I'm, I don't want to blow anybody away. They're, they're very big numbers, but it's a, it's a, it's a multi-trillion dollar mortgage market. Right. So, so they're going to be big numbers at scale. Yeah. Um, okay. So you've got uh, recently added appraisals now or a now.com as it's called uh, the companies that you've been talking about here. were all more or less consolidated just in the last several months. And so it, an outsider looks at this and, and says, wow, they're building something here. It's really impressive. And and that's why I'm involved because I'm I'm watching this and it's like you're looking across the street at your neighbor and there's like lights and sparks <laughs> flashing and you're wondering, what's he building in there? And so I've been watching for a while and I know it's something, it's going to be something impressive, but the, the million dollar question for all of people like me who are watching from the outside is when is it going to be done? When is it ready for prime time? When does it sort of sweep the market as it exists aside? When do you start generating those big $100 million EBIT numbers that you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. So um, <laughs> that's funny that you put it that way. I, I can, that's a great visual. I can see it. You know, I, you know you, you're looking at it. And, and quite frankly, the, you know, thinking strategically about, about how we want to approach the marketplace and not, uh, not, you know, um, show our hand too soon. Right. Um, um, and because we don't want people to identify other companies that we have identified that are acquisition targets for us. So we want to be very thoughtful about what we buy and when and how we assimilate it. Um, but I, but now that a now is done, um, I can say this, um, and it's not going to be very long um, for you to start seeing the result of some sparks flying. All right, Jim, we're going to leave it there for now because we've run out of time, but that was a fantastic explanation. And I'm very excited for you guys, obviously, as a shareholder. (laughs) So um, we'll come back to you in, in a few months and we'll see how things are progressing. Really, thank you for your time today. Love it. Thank you. Have a great day. 